Hello everyone, my name is Silvio Perez and I'm an application engineer here at Hawk Ridge Systems. In today's video I'd like to discuss what Scatter 3D is and kind of show you a short demonstration of the actual interface. So first of all, let me clarify what Scatter 3D is. Uh, it's really intended for those designers who create organic shapes where it would be really difficult to model from scratch through surface modeling. Um, you know, as you can see on your on the screen there, if we were going to generate that model of a hand, you know, it would be almost nearly impossible to do that with the normal means of surface modeling, but you would need that kind of tool to create those organic shapes. Uh, you know, if you have the luxury of being able to actually scan these type of uh, geometries or shapes uh, and actually output it to a specific file, Scanner 3D is able to open and read those mesh cloud or those mesh files and those point cloud files that those typical scans um, you know output. So from there it provides uh, Scanner 3 all, 3, 3D also provides you know tools to you know kind of fix the mesh and kind of reconstruct the uh, that criteria there and then eventually convert it to a surface geometry and then therefore an actual solid geometry. So it has a pretty good way of kind of streamlining that process where you know typically it would take really long again if we started from scratch. So the other thing that I want to clarify as well is you know where this is included in terms of a SOLIDWORKS package. Uh, for versions 2015 and older Scanner 3D is available in SOLIDWORKS Premium. However, starting in 2016, Scanner 3D got bumped down to SolidWorks Professional. So it's something that, you know, always SolidWorks is coming out with new features that, you know, they include in SolidWorks Premium, then they need to make room for that, so they kind of just make those features that have been there a while that used to be premium down to the lower package such as Professional. So let's see how actually Scanner 3D works, starting from a mesh file converting it to a surface body. So I'm going to be using SOLIDWORKS 2016. Uh, this workflow here is going to be the same even for the older version. So it is something that we need to turn on. So we can go to our add-ins list and we can turn on Scanner 3D. Again, what the Scanner 3D option does is when we go to File Open, we now, when we go into our file types, you know, aside from all the traditional ones that we're familiar with, we can now open up this mesh file or point cloud file. So some of those are some of the traditional ones are a .3ds or a .object file, even an STL, uh, and then we also have the capability to open up that point cloud file. So if I just kind of open up that .3ds and hit open, you see that eventually we're going to get that mesh criteria there. So when you look at it, you know you kind of already see a good idea as far as what that shape's going to be but it's not something that I can actually work with, it's not a physical geometry, it's not a surface model or anything, it's just a mesh file and that's what you see here in the feature tree. So this is where Scanner 3D really comes into play. So when we go into our tool Scanner 3D, you know we have a few options here. And we have uh, a way to kind of create a mesh or edit the mesh where you know maybe we can fine tune it as far as you know how the mesh elements are going to relate to the other surrounding elements for this entire geometry. Uh, for those for who are converting or working with the point cloud file, that's where you would utilize the mesh prep wizard where we first need to convert that to a mesh and then we can use a surface wizard to convert it to a surface model and then we can then eventually uh, create a solid geometry off that. Since we already have the actual mesh geometry here, we can jump straight to the surface wizard. So we have to select the, the mesh here, we select it graphically, and then we can proceed forward. Uh, we have ways to, again, kind of create that, you know, how that uh, mesh is going to be interacting with each other. So we can do some of these repairs manually here, or we can have SOLIDWORKS do it automatically for us. And it actually does a pretty good job. So we can proceed forward with that. And then we can, again, refine that mesh quality. You know, the finer the mesh is, the cleaner that these surfaces are going to look. The more coarse, the more very jagged, or you know, eventually is going to pick up on maybe some invalid faces there. The higher we go, the longer it's going to process. So I'm just going to leave it for at least for the demonstration purpose at its default setting here. And you see that eventually, what it's going to do is going to generate that actual. It's going to recognize that mesh and it's going to generate that surface geometry. Uh, you know, so we can actually, you know, get a usable surface model there. And what you get is, you know, what you may potentially get, at least in this model, obviously we see some red geometry here. 
Now, what that is indicating is that it found some faulty faces. Maybe the mesh criteria was a little bit too coarse. We would probably want to go back and refine it. Or, you know, we may have to bite the bullet and say, well, let's get rid of those faces, and then eventually we'll have to use surface modeling to actually repair them. And that's what it's saying. Do you want me to delete uh, those faces for you? And if I hit yes, all those red faces there are going to be eliminated from the actual surface geometry. Then we go ahead and accept that, complete the process, and then we'll get the actual physical geometry. So now we have a workable geometry, something that we may be familiar with, surface modeling. You see it generates three surfaces there. Uh, it looks like there's a warning, so again, uh, obviously it deleted some of these faces. When we rotate, it's a little bit difficult to see. But uh, what we get is, you know, it's now a good reference to use to you know, create our surface geometry and use some of those surface modeling techniques to actually generate this model. And this is really what Scanner 3D is doing. It's uh, providing, you know, uh, some kind of geometry as a reference where, you know, maybe, you know, if we actually did some actual, you know, pre-processing of, you know, working with that mesh file and cleaning it up a bit, you would get something a little bit more finalized. But at this point now, what we would have to do is, you know, repair this, reconstruct some faces, and obviously add some faces to actually get that physical geometry. But it's a good way to get you to this point where if you didn't have Scanner 3D, you would have to generate this from scratch and spend hours to even get it to this point here. That being said, I kind of want to get you to this point here as far as really clarifying what Scanner 3D is and what it's not. You know, and what it is, it really is a means to get physical data, you know, from a scan to an actual SOLIDWORKS data to potentially use as a reference. You know, it's, you know, depending on how complex, complex the geometry is, it may be able to convert it seamlessly, but it's really there as a reference so we can then use surface modeling to actually reconstruct faces and convert it to a workable surface, and then, again, the goal is to convert it to an actual solid geometry. But more importantly, what it's not, it's not a complete re reverse engineering tool. You saw that, you know, we still have to do some post-processing. It's not going to, you know, really uh, easily convert that scan into something that's final, you know. So there is going to be some actual work that we need to do within, you know, the scan of 3D here. So hopefully this video clarifies and shows how we can get complex geometry to a usable format such as a surface model uh, to allow us to create complex designs uh, within SOLIDWORKS. Thanks for watching.